Having a slow metabolism and an underactive thyroid can be pretty serious stuff. And I mean that in the sense that it can wreak havoc on your life. It can wreak havoc on your waistline. It can wreak havoc on your mood. And the problem is a lot of times, even if we discovered that we have an underactive thyroid or a slow metabolism, we don't really realize what it's doing to other aspects of our life, not just our weight and our overall metabolism, right? Estrogen plays a tremendous role. And whether you are female or male, estrogen plays a big part because newsflash, both men and women have levels of estrogen. Most of the research is done in the women community simply because there's more estrogen dominance, but this definitely applies to you as a male too. So let's talk about the whole thing. Okay, I do ask that you hit that red subscribe button if you like this kind of content, but also please hit the bell icon. And when you hit that bell icon, please select all notifications, not personalized notifications. That way you always get notified when we post out new videos. What we have to remember is that estrogen is processed in the liver and thyroid is processed in the liver. Okay, so if we have too much in the way of estrogen, it bogs down our liver and slows down our liver's ability to ultimately create active thyroid, T3, because our body creates T4 from the thyroid gland and it goes to the liver and turns into the active form of T3. But if we have too much estrogen, our body is busy breaking down estrogen into, well, excretable byproducts. Estrogen is somewhat toxic and it's very fragile. So when we have too much of it, the liver just gets a little bit tired and that equals more estrogen buildup, which turns into a vicious cycle once again. Now, a lot of times the weight gain and things like that, those are symptoms that come later on with an underactive thyroid or low levels of T3. So we don't notice those kinds of things until it's almost too late sometimes. So what we have to look at is some of the other symptoms, right? If you've noticed that your mood is just different, you notice that you're more dis depressed, right? You have uh, more anxiety. You don't take pleasure in the things you used to. You find it hard to get out of bed and get motivated. Those are all telltale signs of, well, estrogen dominance, but ultimately low levels of thyroid hormone. And the reason is, is T3, the thyroid hormone, is in essence a neurotransmitter. It communicates with serotonin. It communicates with dopamine. It's very active in the limbic region of our brain, which means it plays a role in our overall mood. So it's a serious, serious thing. So how do we start correcting this and what's exactly going on? Well, Estrogen is a big, big piece. So research started to find that, well, women that had a higher level of estrogen in the body tend to have lower levels of T3. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that excess estrogen causes the liver to produce more of what is called thyroid binding globulin. Okay, now just like the name implies, thyroid binding globulin binds to the thyroid hormone. Now this isn't always a bad thing, right? It's the job of thyroid binding globulin to take inactive thyroid, bind to it, and let it travel around the bloodstream and then let it off the bus wherever it needs to go. But if you have too much thyroid binding globulin, then you have too much of your thyroid bound up, literally bound up, which means that you're not able to actually utilize that thyroid hormone. So what ends up happening here? Well, you have less available T3 to get into cells. So the cells never really recognize that T3 is there. This can be a big problem because sometimes your brain and your thyroid will still be pumping out enough of the TSH and enough of the T4 to where it kind of throws doctors for a loop when they look at it on a test result, on a lab test. Okay, so it makes it very difficult because as far as the gland is concerned, it looks like it's producing a bunch of T4, but that T4 is getting converted into T3 and then getting bound up. So it's like lost in this estrogen mystery. So when this happens, you also have this feedback response where the estrogen is causing you to essentially utilize less T3. Well, that's causing a signal to go to the brain that says, hey, we're not getting enough T3. So the brain tries producing more in the way of thyroid to compensate. So now you have more of this just T3 and T4, but more getting bound up. So you can see, again, it's a vicious circle. So how do you interrupt this? Well, there's a few different ways. Okay, I wanna talk about one other thing that's really, really important, but I do wanna say, you probably should do your best to limit the xenoestrogens. You should do your best to limit the phytoestrogenic foods, the phenoestrogens, anything like that. Because even if it's an estrogenic food like soy or possibly even alcohol, mainly for men in that case, it can really trigger an estrogen cascade. And the more estrogen that's in your body, the more your liver has to break down. Okay, now here's where things get really wacky when you look at estrogen breakdown. There's something known as 2-methoxyestradiol. This is a very toxic byproduct of estrogen metabolism. It's perfectly natural, but it's still a toxic byproduct. Well, it turns out that when you have estrogen dominance, 
you end up having way more of this 2-methoxy uh, estradiol that does not get excreted. Okay, so what's happening is your liver is slowing down. So it's slowing down not only the production of uh, T3, but it's slowing down the metabolism, leaving much more of this toxic byproduct. So this toxic byproduct, as shown in the journal Molecular Cellular Endocrinology, ends up changing the thyroid hormone. So when the body is producing T3 in the liver, if it's exposed to this toxic byproduct of estrogen, it changes the viability of the thyroid hormone itself. So that quite virtually means that your thyroid hormone, even if it is there, is less effective because it's been exposed to this toxic estrogen. FYI, if you're interested, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. Those of you that watch my channel, you know this comes as no surprise to you because I talk about them all the time because they're a big supporter of this channel. I have a thyroid support grocery kit through Thrive Market, which is an online-based grocery store. So it's all foods that I think are good for supporting the thyroid, but are also non-estrogenic foods. So I put that together. You can access it via the link down below, no pressure, but that way you can at least see, hey, what would Thomas recommend that I get at the grocery store that's not estrogenic, that's also going to support T4 and T3 production and conversion. So highly recommend you check that out after you watch this video. When you do have that decreased viability of the thyroid hormone, another thing happens, sort of a secondary result. You end up developing a high degree of what are called uh, thyroid antigens and thyroid antibodies. Okay, these are TPO, like uh, thyroid peroxidase uh, antibodies. This is very common in people that have Hashimoto's or have autoimmune conditions. Now, there's some interesting growing evidence or bodies of evidence that are starting to say that people that typically have hypothyroidism, predominantly women, well, they also have coexisting autoimmune issues. Now, a lot of times they're not tested, right? My wife's levels, for example, I can talk about her. She, uh, she was seeing a lot of low levels of thyroid, but they couldn't figure out what was going on until finally they tested her for some various autoimmune conditions. They found, well, what do you know? She has Hashimoto and some other autoimmune issues going on. And she's very open about that, so I'm not divulging any medical information by saying that. Point is, this is one of the reasons she changed her life and one of the reasons we do what we do as a couple in terms of our online presence in the health community. The point is, is if you're someone that is struggling with sort of a mystery low thyroid level that even the doctors are puzzled with, you may want to look at some of the research that points to estrogen dominance. If you started to see that, say, after age 30, after age 35, when your progesterone levels start to go down and naturally your estrogen levels are out of whack, well, that could very well be a link. So most of the hypothyroid issues end up coming in after people are, say, 34, 35 years old, and their life just starts to change after they have kids, hormones change. So something to pay attention to. And for men, you need to be especially careful with the alcohol consumption. You need to be especially careful with any kind of estrogenic foods like, again, soy, too much in the way of flax. I like flax, but not too much. Okay, because these can cause much more of a powerful effect on you than women simply because you have a lower level of thyroid to begin with. So any small minuscule change is going to affect that ratio dramatically and consequently affect your liver's metabolism of that 2-methoxyestradiol. Anyhow, I can dive in more and more. If you want to see more thyroid-related content, I ask that you comment below in the comment section and let me know. I'll see you tomorrow.